Okay, hi everyone. So as part of my presentation tonight, I am going to be asking you three questions. And the first one is this. This is the wrong slide deck, okay. Um, <laughs> the first one is this, do you know where your water comes from? Well, if you live in Edmonton like I do, then you probably know that your water comes from the North Saskatchewan River. And we are so privileged here in Edmonton to be able to turn on our taps and have clean drinking water in an instant. But we often don't think about the actual source of that water, the headwaters of the North Saskatchewan River. Well, the North Saskatchewan River originates at the Saskatchewan Glacier here in Banff National Park. But only 2% of our water comes from the glacier. A whopping 86% comes from the mountains and forests uh, east of the glacier in an area of Alberta called the Bighorn Backcountry. The Bighorn is about three and a half hour uh, drive southwest of here near Rocky Mountain or Nordegg. And like I said, yes, it provides us with almost 90% of our drinking water. But beyond that, it's also incredibly important. It is Alberta's last intact forest. And by intact, I mean relatively free of roads, seismic lines, pipelines, oil and gas well pads, and forestry cut blocks. The mountains and forests of the Bighorn provide amazing habitat for iconic Canadian species like uh, bighorn sheep, grizzly bears, mountain goats, uh, cougars, lynx, moose, elk, native fishes, and endangered species like white bark pine trees. The forests of the bighorn uh, clean our water and filter our air, but they also provide us and our communities with ecosystem services that we don't think about, such as um, flood and drought mitigation. The forests of the Bighorn act like a sponge and they soak up excess water and make sure that we avoid catastrophic events like the flood of High River in 2013. Now we're really lucky. Our headwaters right now are in a pretty healthy state. But science is showing that uh, river flows in Alberta are 20 to 80% lower than they were 100 years ago. The causes um, include damming for hydroelectric activity, human water withdrawals for industrial activity and agriculture, and climate warming, which is leading to a decreased snowpack in the mountains in the winter and changes in rainfall patterns. So, Edmonton, this was your headwaters in May of this year. The Bighorn is not immune to these um, problems. In fact, there is ongoing logging in the foothills of the Bighorn right now. There is oil and gas exploration and drilling, and there's a coal seam that runs right through the mountains and many proposals to have open pit coal mines in our headwaters. These industrial activities have the potential to cause major problems for our water. But we are not um, you know, blameless either. Irresponsible recreational activity is rampant in the Bighorn. There are many random campsites, and after a weekend in the Bighorn, you'll find garbage strewn throughout the forest and trees cut down by chainsaws, trees that otherwise would have stabilized the bank of the river and provided shade for the next campers. Motorized recreation has a great impact on our water by damaging stream beds and potentially um, destroying fish habitat, and also costing you tax dollars when downstream communities, including the city of Edmonton, have to spend more money to clean our water because of all the mud that's been put into the river. So my second question for you is this. What do you want for your headwaters? The organization I work for, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, would like to see the Bighorn protected as a wildland provincial park for many reasons. The first of these is that a wildland provincial park means that the intact forest and pristine waters of our headwaters um, would be protected for all time um, against industrial development. They would also uh, be managed by our government for the nature values that they contain. Wildland provincial parks allow indigenous communities that live in and around the area to, um, uh, to continue to practice their traditional and cultural practices. And so we advocate for the creation of these wildland provincial parks. 
A wildland provincial park would allow all Albertans the opportunity to explore the area and continue doing the outdoor recreational activities they love, such as camping, hiking, uh, climbing, hunting, and fishing. On top of that, parks have benefits to the surrounding communities, including things like increasing property values, lowering juvenile delinquency rates, believe it or not, and also by providing an influx of ecotourism dollars when people like you and I have to buy our groceries from the local communities before we go camping, or when we have to employ a local guide to show us the area. On a personal level, I would like to see my, my headwaters protected as a park because I want my friends, I want your friends, and I want our future generations to reap the physical and mental benefits of being able to connect to nature and get outside in Alberta's amazing wilderness. And I would still like to be able to take it for granted that when I turn on my tap, I am going to have a clean, reliable source of drinking water. So my final question for you is, I know what I'm gonna do to protect my headwaters. I'm gonna love my headwaters. And my question for you is, what are you gonna do and what can you do to love your headwaters? Um, I'm happy to chat with you after the talk and um, thank you for listening tonight.